I have negotiated $120 million contracts and I've negotiated down to a $2,500 contract, right? I have never had an experience where procurement added any value. In fact, uh, if I can think back on every single sale across 27 years where I've ever engaged with procurement, it was the business uh, individual who basically did all the negotiating, all of the uh, identification of the who, the what, the how, and then passed it off because procurement was just a rubber stamp process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I think there's some value in some cases where you can start gleaning some information from a procurement person to help you through process. But in most cases, it's the budget owner, the business owner who has the budget, not procurement. So procurement is more of the rubber stamp. Do we have net 45? Do we have this? Do we have that? You know, can we take risk on this? Can we take risk on that? And so that's where I, I've seen that. And so I'm, 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 I'm curious about your experience with negotiating with procurement and when you bring them in and how that process works that you've seen. So there's a couple of things. So one, this conversation uh, came from a good friend of mine, Alan Tarkowski. Um, if you've never had him on, you should have him on. Um, really smart guy. He was coaching me on this. I then had client negotiations with General Electric. And then I came up with this idea about a year and a half ago. And I've done some podcast hosting with procurement people from Mercedes-Benz. With a very large software company, one of the two biggest who I'm not allowed to mention, but you can probably figure it out. Um, and I've had several conversations and they actually go in and they teach some of this stuff. They actually do teach. So I had to, to your point, okay, now we're talking about the fortune 100 or the fortune 50. Get it. No worries. That being said, I've talked to other procurement people and, and to kind of confirm and they're like, yeah, that that's kind of what I would like. So the first thing to remember is that procurement's not the enemy, they have a job to do too. Depending on the organization and how big they are, procurement's job is also to go research what's in the marketplace. Now, I don't know if that's been your experience or by the time you got to them, Mario, that, that it was kind of like already a done deal, right? So that's a part of it. Now, what procurement doesn't have the power to do, theoretically, but I think they scare the hell out of us, is... If I'm into one of these big contracts, I'm not talking about a $2,500 contract, to make procurement could say, well, we're just going to have to go with the competition. Well, if I've already put in 50 hours with my person, and believe me, you probably have, procure, I, you know, I will then turn around to procurement at that moment and say, well, I'm a little confused. I've spent this much time on this. Your team has spent this much time on it. What's the difference in the delta here that you're talking about? Okay. 2%. I get it. Is that really worth them going and doing another 50 hours of this and going back through security and IT and all this stuff? Because if it is, uh, you know, I'll go back to the champion and, and, you know, we'll communicate this. I'm hoping we can find a way to work this out. So procurement doesn't always have all the power that we think they do. Right. Now, there are times where a procurement person might say, we're not buying from a startup unless you discount it. Right. Now you got to still have a negotiation and a conversation around it. That being said, they don't have as much power as we think they do. So that's the first thing. Second thing, because of what I was saying, procurement wants to see it sooner than later. They don't want to be there at the end of the, you know, in the last two weeks of December with everything. And it's kind of like, if we can say that to our champion internally, like, hey, you know, can you find it? This is the best way to say it is like, hey, our most successful and happiest customers, Mario, have brought us in at this point to talk to procurement because we know there's a lot of back-end stuff over there. How comfortable are you with that right now? So you're, again, I'm asking for permission. I'm not demanding it. I'm not saying, well, when can I talk to them? It's like, I'm giving them this, hey, you know, this is what happy people do. Or say, hey, just to make sure you don't have to go back to procurement and relook at four other things which might happen our experience has been our happiest customers introduce us sooner so we can get that process rolling. And because a lot of salespeople are champions, if you're a buyer, you don't know that either. You don't know how procurement works other than that piece. I agree with you, Mario. They often are a rubber stamp. It's got to go there. 
the question is, depending on the size of the deal and the company you're working with, it can be a little, it can feel more adversarial than I think we want it to based on the fact that that's just because that's what we've always been told. Yeah, you know, I think the biggest challenge that I've seen is is when a procurement person comes into the very first discussion looking for additional discounts. But that's so easy to handle. It's so easy. It's so easy. So first thing is, whenever you talk about pricing or budget, anytime they bring up those words, because they will, I immediately say, more than happy to talk about commercial terms. I shift that word specifically because commercial terms means there is an exchange of money for goods and services that have value. If it's a budget or price, that all that means is sell X27 on somebody's freaking spreadsheet, right? So one, it's a mental game. Switch it to commercial terms because it implies a negotiation. You know, I also learned it from a guy from, from England and I was like, that sounds really professional. I'm going to use that word. So, um, of course, he had an English accent, so that, you know, in America, we always think that that's way cooler. Um, so that's the first thing, right? The other thing that I will say around discounting is, is you know, okay, well, what kind of discount? Here, role play with me, Mario. Tell, be procurement. Tell me, tell me what kind of, tell me, you know, you want a discount. Uh, Richard, we want to have a discount uh, because we feel like this is a little bit too expensive for us and the budget, uh, frankly, doesn't quite allow this. Totally understand that, and, and commercial terms are always important. Just out of curiosity, Mario, what, 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 what's comfortable for you? Well, what we'd like for you to do is put your best foot forward and your best pricing. Yeah, and, and, and I appreciate that, Mario. I get it. That feels a little unfair, like a teeter-totter. You know, our, our pricing is based on what the market bears. We've done a really good job of understanding it. And if you're asking me for something, I'll entertain it. I just think you should go first since you're the one asking. What would you really like it to be that makes it simple? Got it. Are we still role playing? Yeah, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Well, what we've seen in terms of competitive bids for this is roughly there's a 30% delta where you where you need to be. Got it. So, um, and I, I totally understand. I, re I respect that. It sounds like they're a little desperate. And I'll explain why, you know, when I was talking to Sarah, who's, you know, who's really the, going to be the user and the, the decision maker, Sarah explained that we beat this competition here, this competition here, and this competition there. And in addition to that, the pain that y'all are experiencing, it's about a $250,000 a year pain. So, you know, our service is, you know, $60,000. You know, you're asking for 30% off, you know, you're asking for a $20,000 difference. I, I appreciate it. I respect it. I guess the question is for $20,000 versus a $250,000 paying, and it's going to happen every year. Are, is that worth you making Sarah go back and spend the, another 15 or 20 hours of her time on this? And then another two or three hours of your time and legal's time? I mean, it's an option. I just I just want to make sure I understand everything from your perspective. What do you think? I could say twenty thousand dollars. That's what I would do. And they won't be able to do these three functions that have an economic impact of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, what you're doing is is you're you're really turning that conversation into what it is that you knew or found out or researched prior to this conversation that helps you put together a business case for the sales opportunity.